earlier you had also mentioned about the school curriculum, and my personal perspective about the school curriculum is I went my entire life not knowing about the majority of the Nile, Nile, um, <laughs> Nile Valley contributions and civilization. Couldn't have said it better, Miss Elliot. Anthony Browder. Anthony Browder needs to be seen and heard in every school, at every grade level, and in every women's club, in every men's club, at every golf course. They should be playing um, this, this Anthony Browder's materials. I went my entire life, Miss Elliot, without learning these things. So is this what you're referring to when you say that the majority of these schools are indoctrinating because they're teaching fictitious narratives and history you to teach only things in only things that were accomplished by white males. And as if all these white males had no mothers. <laughs> I mean that in itself is that I find that absurd. so absurd. Yeah, yeah. Absurd. It is absurd. And we call it history. And we call it American history. Let me tell you something. Or social studies. Would you argue the anti social studies? I mean, well of course it's anti social studies, but American history, you really need to realize what our present president doesn't that every person who resides in the, from the northernmost point of Canada to the southernmost point of South America lives in the Americas. Mm. They are all Americans. North Americans, right. which includes Canadians, right. <laughs> um, right. Central Americans, South Americans. They are all Americans. But we're going to build a wall wow. to keep people out who aren't Americans? That's not well, that means nobody, you can't be, keep anybody out from South America or Canada because they're all Americans. Mm -hmm. This is the... This it's absurd. Is the, yeah, it's, it's a symptom of our silliness. And it's an indication of our ignorance. He doesn't even know geography. Right. Even about his own country. Yeah. He said to the governor of Puerto Rico, I've talked to your president. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, fool, you are her president. Right, right, right. right. Everybody forgot to mention yeah. that to him before he opened his mouth. And going to Puerto Rico to see what it, this awful thing had happened to them and how they were dealing with it, and taking paper towels and throwing rolls of paper towels at the people who came to get some comfort. I had a personal friend who was in the military, and he actually ultimately had to, to leave. He was over there for months with no power electricity. He served. Absolutely. Months with Absolutely. no power. He said, Sid, they didn't do anything. They, they are not. There are people in this country, in positions of power, who see those of color as less human mm. than we colorless people are. Mm. And if they didn't, they wouldn't, we wouldn't treat them the way we do. And we wouldn't pass the laws we have passed. And we wouldn't deliberately segregate people. Right. on the basis of the color of their skin. And until you read the power of the color of law, you won't realize what that's all about. Right. But once you read it, you will never again be led blindly into that ridiculous night. It's got to be stopped. Right. The next question I have for you right now is, how do you feel about those who support the wall and ultimately want to create this wall? To keep Name one. Name one who supports the idea of the wall. Well, there's a lot of people out there online who, who will say, or of you in politics do say, they want to pay for it? No. no, no. Do they want to? Do they want to do the work that those Mexicans do, who come up, up <laughs> from at Mexico, or those South no. Americans who, and those Central Americans who come up into this country and do backbreaking labor at less money than any colorless mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. would work for? Do they want to do that? No. Believe me, they don't. Believe me, we need those people. You best be appreciative of what they are able to do. How smart they are how strong they are, how willing they are, and how ambitious they are. Right. You'd better recognize those characteristics of those people. Right. And you, you see, my heroes are black women. Make no mistake about this. Black women have been tolerating this ignorance and near insanity in this country for over 300 years. Mm -hmm. And they keep on keeping on regardless of the ugliness we visit upon them. I don't know how they do it, but they do. And I have nothing but admiration for them. And they produce bright, ambitious, courageous, curious, wonderful children. Right. So, skin color is not the reason they behave the way they do. They behave the way they do in reaction to ignorance. Right. And they keep on keeping on. No matter how ignorantly we behave, they understand white folks. Right. People of color understand that we aren't real bright. Because if we were real bright, 
we would have stopped this situation at the beginning. We would have come to this land, we would have written a constitution that does not call one person three fifths of a person. Exactly. We would not have written that kind of con right. constitution, and we would not have bought people and used them as slaves. We wouldn't have done that. So what you're saying is when people are ultimately saying, build a wall to keep Americans out, they're ultimately perpetuating ignorance because you're keeping your own American people out. The only way you can build a wall to keep American out yeah. is to build a wall on the southern tip of South America and on the northern tip of North America. Because <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's stupid. Oh, He's teaching people not to think. It's just stupid. You are you are forcing people to deny the truth. The truth. Yes. You are forcing teachers to teach the truth, and you are forcing children to respond positively to being lied to. Right. And they better be able to regurgitate the lies on the end of your test. Right. This is ridiculous. This is the opposite of education. This is. This is perpetuating ignorance yep. instead of leading students out of ignorance. But teachers learn the same thing that they teach. You can't teach what you don't know. Right. Every teacher should be required to read the main or the titles. They only read the titles. They won't read the books, but they ought to read the books that are listed on my bibliography. Right. Because t reading those books will make a difference in the way you see human beings in your environment. Right. And this is what we have to do. Right. So the next question I have right now is, do you believe that most people believe the lie or are they using this lie right now to fuel and justify their racism? I think most white people suspend disbelief in order to get along with their peers. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example? I think we go along to get along. I think I rocked the boat in the Riceville schools because I said, this is wrong. And then... The teachers had to stop speaking to me because if they were seen speaking to me through the bad one, people wouldn't think they were like me. And that's what they said. That's what they said. That is a, that's exactly the words that they said. Pretty soon other people are going to think we're all like you and we aren't, Mrs. Elliott. And I thought, don't worry about it. They will never think that you are like me. Right. And I think that we mistake education. I think we mistake learning for education. I think we mistake... Um, Indoctrination for education. They have done studies in this country that prove that the longer you stay in school, the more bigoted you become. I heard this. Because, yes, because you Why? Are, every year you are reinforced in what you learned K through 12. And what you learned K through 12 was the accepted lie. We learned that Columbus discovered America, so we have Columbus Day. We finally have Native American Day, but not all over the United States. Right? Correct. Like Oregon, yes, and Washington, I think. They don't teach I, the Arawaks or Dr. Ivan Sertimas, the old Max, none of that. No, 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 no. We only teach what we learned. And what we learned was not true. But it was acceptable to the powers that be. It was acceptable to the power structure. And the power structure is white male. You know that, and I know that. Yes. And after you read the color of law, yes. you will understand that you will have the answer to the question that you just asked. We know there's something wrong. But it was, and people say to me all the time, it was good enough for my father and it's good enough for me. And I said, wait a minute. It, isn't good, it wasn't good enough for your father. Your father lived in ignorance. We now have all kinds of, we have proof that there's only one race, right. that we're all members of the same race. We all have the right to be treated fairly on, in this country and on this earth. Your father didn't learn that because we didn't have proof. We have proof now. Right. We can use DNA testing and find out whether you're a member of a different race, and you can't because there isn't one. Right. You'll find out that your, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your antecedents came from another country. But at the base of them, every one of them will have DNA that came from a country in Africa. Exactly. So, this, you'll need more proof. If you need more proof, look at the number of people of different color groups who mate and reproduce beautiful children. Right. And then try to tell me that we are more than one race. Exactly. So ultimately, this would lend credence to what you had said before, because the information is out there. Well, and I think that people who go along, go along to get along. Right. You'll be accepted in this job, in this corporation, in this school, in this club, in this community, as long as you don't put your head above the parapet. And once you put your head above the parapet, somebody's going to try and shoot it off. You're referring to like rattling the cages. Talking about rattling cages. Don't care what you call it, but this is you. It's 
keep it keep it here don't make waves and if you make waves you will immediately I found out <laughs> find out how it feels to be the one who makes the waves because most of us do not want to change our thinking right we don't want to have to learn a whole new set of ideas we just we've got it fixed and now we find out that we didn't have it fixed we thought in the 60s and 70s and 80s all we had to deal with were those flower children in the yep. 60s. And then we, you know, we, the different groups came up, but at least they weren't black. Right. And then came Barack Obama. Right. And now we have to undo what he did. Yeah. And we hired a man to undo what Barack Obama did. And what Barack Obama did was prove the ignorance of racism. Right. He didn't run for the presidency in order to do that. And he worked hard while he was president not to be seen as trying to do that. But anybody who watched what happened during those eight years has to realize that we have been lied to drastically and most unfortunately. Would you be able to give the people at home um, some, a bibliography or a list of books that you really like, that you can recommend that everybody needs to, uh, on their own volition of course, they need to read or review? New Jim Crow by, Alexander, by Michelle Alexander. New Jim Crow by? New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. The Nature of Prejudice by Gordon Alport. Eat a Bowl of Chew by Eat a Bowl of Tea by Louis Chu. <laughs> uh, Black Rage by Cop, Price and Cobbs. Everybody has to read that book. William Cryer and Price Cobbs. Uh, the Rage of a Privileged Class by Alice Coase. Custer Died for Your Sins by Vine, by Vine Deloria. If you haven't read Custer Died for Your Sins, you better get it. He also wrote God is Red and We Talk, You Listen. You've got to read Andrew Hacker's book, Two Nations, Black and White, Separate, Hostile, and Unequal. You have to read it. Um, the, uh, black and White Styles in Conflict. Thomas Cockman, oh my. The, oh no, you don't want to read that one. Boy. <laughs> A Class Divided Then and Now, which is about this exercise. Sure. Blaming the Victim by William Ryan. The Color Purple is Priceless. And the, the movie was made out of the book written about the black people who, The Help. Yeah. Have you read The Help? Yes, I have. Oh, good Lord. Yes. Every, everybody should read The Help. I, I don't remember the author's yeah. name. You have to read The Color of Law. You have, I, I read constantly. Oh, The Birth Dearth, the 1987 edition of The Birth Dearth, and The Myth of Race by Sussman. Be yeah. sure you get the suspect. Everyone needs to read these. Everyone needs to read particularly The Myth of Race and The Color of Man, which is a book written for kids from the age of 7 to 14. It's just a wonderful book about it. how many different colors there are on the earth and what those are all about. It's just those books ought to be in every parent's library. Yeah. Kids ought to see their parents sitting there reading those books yeah. so that because kids copy what their parents do. Yep. And if they see enough parents reading books, kids will be more anxious to read, more eager to read, more willing to read. Yeah. Put down the TV, the video games, now is the time to read. Turn those TV shows off. Off the television. Yes, I agree. Uh, who was it said, this country will be changed by that idiot box. <laughs> and it has been, and we are reading yep. on a daily basis. But yeah, and, and or go to this book, get this book, and I'm not selling books, that's not what I'm into. But get this book, and if you want a bibliography, there's a bibliography yep. at the end of the book. Get it and read everything on the bibliography. Perfect. Thank you so much. This is called self-education. Yeah. You can't expect the school to do it because the teachers don't know what you are going to know. No white teacher knows what her black students know. They come in knowing more than any of their teachers do. And they leave convinced that they don't know anything. Right. Because it was something they didn't learn from the teacher. Right. But they did learn some really ugly things from the teacher, yeah. like how to treat those who are different. Yeah. And how to use a map called the Mercator Projection Map, which is the most ridiculous teaching tool that I have ever been aware of. Mm. Have you seen the no. Mercator Projection Map? No. Can you give us a synopsis as to what that is? Oh, man. Ms. Elliott, would you be able to give us a synopsis as to what's wrong with the maps in the school systems today? Get a picture of the map in your mind. Get a picture of the map that you use, the world map that hung on the wall of your classroom. Sure. Get a picture of it in your mind. You see Greenland hanging down there like a ripe plum? Yes. Of course, that's what Donald Trump wants to buy. <laughs> 
because it's so huge. Right. Now get a picture of South America. Okay. This little tiny place down at the bottom of the map. In fact, if you read the legend on that map, it says South America is actually nine times larger than Greenland. Mm. Does that make a difference to you? Mm. Yes. And if you have your students, or if you yourself, go to that Mercator projection map. And Mercator was commissioned by the Pope to make a map that showed the spread of Christianity, not necessarily to show the right size or location of the land masses on the map, but the spread of Christianity. Find the equator. Okay. According to your social studies teachers, what is the equator? It's that central line that... An imaginary line around the center of the earth, halfway right. between the North Pole and the South, South Pole. Find it on the Mercator map. You'll find it two-thirds of the way down the map. So you can't teach equator, the definition of equator, and use that map because you're creating cognitive dissonance in your students. Mm. Now, Peter, our little Peters, came up with a new map. The sizes on this map and the locations on this map are right. Oh. The sizes and the locations are right. So this map actually gives you a real narrative of what the sizes of these places should this be. This is a map that is fair to all people. Find Greenland on this map. Before I do that... No, Mom, find Greenland on this map. Okay, I believe... Bl Put your finger on Greenland. Do what I tell you to. All right. <laughs> Where's Greenland on this map? There's Ireland. Here's Greenland. Put it up there. Look how small it is. Now I'm finding South America. Down there. Yep. Look see. how big it is. This is insane. No, this isn't insane. The one we've been using is insane. You no, know, what I'm saying is insane. I'm referring to insane is the fact that it, it's insane for the fact that this map gives a fair um, representation of what the sizes are. I was always under the impression too that Africa was a heck of a lot smaller or almost relatively look similar to the United States. Look at the size of Africa. But the United States can be fit into Africa. Well, several several countries can be fit into Africa. Africa. And I have a map in the house that I'll give you to take with you that shows you Africa with several countries in it. So why are they teaching the map that way? It's tradition, don't you know. And it makes the white country, the places where white country, white, white people live bigger and where people of color live smaller. Mm, 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 mm. Now, on this map, the equator is at zero degrees. Find it halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole. And there's a zero over here on the left-hand yeah. side. Find the zero. Yeah. I see it. There it is. Mm -hmm. There's where the equator is on this map. Now, let me show you something. Mm -hmm. Hand me that. That map right there. Sure. Good for you right away. That'll work. That'll work. No, that's only part of it. Give me the other one, too. All right. Well, this'll work. This'll work. This'll work. work. Okay. This'll work. Look here. Okay. This is... <laughs> this is the Mercator projection map. Sure. I should take a look at it. See Greenland? <laughs> <laughs> Like it's so huge, but it's not really that large. See South America? Yeah. Small. Yeah. South America's tiny. Trump, Trump, Trump should have bought Greenland before it shrunk. Wow. <laughs> you didn't know this? No. Find the equator on this map. You'll find that it's clear down here. Here. It's right there. Two thirds of the way down the map. This is the map that has been used for about 300 years in the United States to teach about the relative shape, size, and locations of landmass on the face of the Earth. So this is what you're saying. It's, per it's perpetuating a, a false narrative that these Absolutely. areas are larger and the of places where Europeans come from is much larger and all the right. African areas are That's smaller. Right. So right. visually we're smaller, mentally we're smaller, That's spiritually right. we're smaller. That's is that what we, you're saying? That's what we use maps for. To nail down the lie that we are telling on a daily basis. And that map will do it for you. That is absurd. You've never seen this before? No, I have not. Well, I've seen that map let me, let me, before, but not this Let me this put it this way. I showed this on the Oprah Winfrey Show many years ago. Sure. As a result of that, the Boston Public Schools put the, Mercat put the Peters Projection Map in the classrooms in the Boston Public Schools just last year. Just last year? Just last year. Wait, 20, 2018? When were you on Oprah Winfrey Show? Oh, oh my, a long time ago. When you say over 10 years ago? 
Oh yeah, well, way over ten years ago. So you're telling me it took them over fifteen to twenty years but, to finally act? No, that's not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is that they finally did it. <laughs> it's not. It's not as important that it took them forever. It's important that they finally did it, and finally, children in the Boston public schools are going to see this map instead of that one. And I think that very fact is progress. Yes. Yes. That I'm just. Uh, uh, excuse my, my language, appalled that that information is being taught in a school district. I'm appalled that you didn't, hadn't ever seen it before. No. Because it wasn't just one school district. I'm sure you attended more than one school district. I did. And I'm sure you attended more than one level. I did. <laughs> you graduated from college. Yes. But you never saw that distinct difference. No. No, no you were, I have not. You were miseducated. Yes, I was. You were partially Educated, no matter how many degrees you have, Correct. you are partially educated. If you don't know, and if you if you don't do anything else, read the information at the bottom of this map. It is just, it is just mind blowing yeah. when you read that stuff and realize. See, on the bottom of the map, it compares the Mercator map to the Peters projection map, and you can't deny that that's what's going on. There it is. Yeah. and this would substantiate and lend credence to what you said before about. Miseducation. Yes, yeah, yeah. The miseducation of the American mind. Marshall McLuhan told us this would happen. He told us that this would happen because of television. What did he say exactly? He said that this will this will destroy this the way this society thinks about the world and their place in it. You have to read the books books by Marshall McLuhan. That's on my he, list next. Yeah, he knew what he was talking about. And I would have said, Oh, that's that's not true, that's not the way it is. And then somebody showed me, I saw my daughter, my sister saw a discussion of the Peter's projection map on television sure. several years ago. And she called me and said, Jane, you better get a hold of this. You better take this one. You better look at it. So I bought it. And I now I take it wherever I go. This looks insane. I kind of want everybody at home to see this and lift it up. You write to ODT and the address is on the bottom of that map. Okay. Tell them that you saw this. You tell them that Jane Elliott said, get this map. Got it. And they will send you reams of material about maps and how, how they are used to support certain theories or certain false ideas. Right. This map is going to tell you the truth about the size and the location of the countries of the earth. It won't, the, the, the shapes are distorted, but it, you can see the, the difference in the size and the shapes on the size and the location on Zith as compared to the Mercator projection map. And it is just insulting. Yep. Again, green that is tiny here, <laughs> small, small, and now it's going to grab this for you. And the green one here is massive. Yes. yes. Massive here. And this map is right. That's absurd. See, it, well, of course it's absurd. But hey, you don't know. No. So has it worked for a while? Yes. Did yes. it work for you yes. until you got here today? Yes. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I mean, everybody in this world, I mean, so they had the privilege to, to, to well, learn well, the well, right way from that, should, that shouldn't be a privilege. That should be a necessity. Yes. That should be a requirement. Every teacher in the United States of America, every teacher trainee, every educator in this country should be familiar with this and be prepared to show it to every person who comes to them, either to be educated or just to have a little visit. Yes. The new Mercator map uh -huh. doesn't have that legend on it. Oh, so they don't even tell you the truth now. They just going to let you believe the... They've taken the legend off the map. The legend that says... The legend that, that says these are South America is actually nine times larger than Greenland. Wow. It has been removed from the map. I looked at that. I, I went to buy one. And there's, there's this map without the legend. I thought, what the hell? I bought it. So that when I take it, now when I take the do the map thing, people say, I don't know read the bottom of the map. And then I say, now, let's compare the new. And somebody will say, well, they aren't doing that anymore. I say, let's, let's see about that. So I hold, have somebody hold up the new one. Find the legend that says that South America is actually nine times larger than Greenland. They look, and they look, and they look. And the people in the audience say, look over there, look over there, look over there. I say, you find that? No, why not? It's not there. <laughs> it's not there. We took that piece of truth off that map. You want to talk about mind control and thought control? If these things were happening in Russia, we'd call it mind control. Yep. We'd call it brainwashing. Yep. But in this country, we call it education. Yep. Uh, with, the, with the shootings that just took place, why, I hate to go there, why I have yet 
to hear our president call this domestic terrorism. But I'm almost certain that if a person of color, a black person, or a Latino, have done the exact same thing, we would have been called all of those things. You'd have been, you'd have been, you wouldn't have made it to jail. No, I'd be dead, right? I've been shot in the dead. I know it. I know it. And what bothers me more than anything about this, Miss Elliot, is, and that's what your perspective on this, is that the first thing they always say is, oh, it must be mental illness, and Trump comes out and says, it's the video games. But he won't dare say what really transpired. Well, why is that? When he says that, you need to say it takes one to know one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can recognize something that's an indication of a mental problem. Because he has the same problem. <laughs> this is not mental illness. This is being conditioned to the myth of white superiority. And if you haven't read Nathan Rutstein's book, uh, Racial Conditioning of Our Children, the subtitle of which is Ending Psychological Genocide in the Schools. If you haven't read that book, you don't understand that this isn't mental illness. This is the result of years of conditioning to the myth of white superiority. That's what it's all about. It is not about mental illness. We act crazy. We aren't crazy. We are responding to our conditioning. So video games have nothing to do with this. What? This video games and all the stuff he alleged has nothing to do with this. Video games have nothing to do with this, but just as he can keep you thinking about things like he's going to buy Greenland. Right. Instead of thinking about what he's really doing. Yep. You put kids in front of a video game and then you don't have to really teach them anything. Yep. Now they don't learn how to kill people from a video game. Yeah. They, they just keep their attention away from something that matters. Yeah. Because you can't learn much from a video game unless it's a very specially constructed video game. These video games are not constructed to teach people to kill one another. No. They are constructed to entertain children. Sure. And they do that beautifully. You can keep a kid happy for eight years. <laughs> Or just once in a while, go and feed him. Give him a little water and a little something to drink. That's how to eat. And he'll be perfectly happy for years. And then he'll grow up, as my grandson did, and graduate from high school and still playing video games. And then his best friend dies as a result of something having to do with video games. He wasn't killed because of video games, but because of whatever. And he went into the military. And when he came out, his, his he has a, I have a new, Great grandson, it's going to be wonderful. Sure. And he said, "My kid will never watch video games." Mm. I said, "Thank you very much, Zachary. Thank you very yeah. much." Yeah. It slowed down his growth. Yeah. His intellectual growth was stunted by video games. Yeah. What do you learn from playing a video game? You want to play a game that teaches you how to play chess? Watch it on video and then play chess. Right. Then there are lots of things you can learn from video games. But you don't learn how to kill from video games. No. Right? Very few of us have right. something in outer space that we can shoot at the White House. Exactly. You know? Exactly. You know, the whole that's that's ridiculous. So why has not he called these individuals domestic terrorists, but other individuals of white of color, he's quick to he would be quick to call these individuals that. Is does he call the people who the person who shot those kids in that schoolroom several years ago domestic terrorists? No. Was he a domestic terrorist? No. He was a twisted individual mm -hmm. who wanted to make his name and yeah. make a main name for himself, which is a good description of our president. Yeah. yeah. A twisted individual who wanted to make a name for himself. Yeah. All he wanted was a new video show, yeah. a new video, a new uh, television program when he lost the first one. He didn't want to be president, he just wanted attention, and that's what he gets, and that's what he's doing every day. You have to realize, this is a boy grown tall. Yeah. This is not an adult that we're dealing with. Yeah. And if he saw these maps, he would probably want to see to it that none of these maps, or that this map never got into the school. Correct. Yeah. Because it would challenge his idea of what the land masses on the earth look like. Yeah. And you aren't allowed to challenge his ideas. Yeah. Because he had one once. Yeah. I can't remember what it was, but I'm sure it must have happened. <laughs> Would you be able to touch upon white privilege and what it is? Or do you think white privilege is white, is white ignorance? Or white people have the right to ultimately be ignorant? Look, the idea of white privilege began with a paper written by a college professor hmm. in, I think, 1987, close to that time. 
And at that time, the woman who wrote that paper didn't realize that there was only one race. Right. And so she said, I can stand up in, where's this effect? I can stand up in the meeting and give my opinion and not have my opinion discarded because of my race. I can buy a house in the neighborhood in which I'd like to live and not be refused the pur to purchase that house because of my race. Because of my race, because of my race, because of my race. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, if I can, she can do all those things because of her race, since there's only one race, then we can all do all those things. Right. Right. So... The idea, if you want to write a, a paper about white privilege, write a paper about the ignorance of believing you are privileged because of the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it's all about. And that is, it needs to be called white ignorance. Right. Not white privilege, privilege, white ignorance. Well, but, but we do have privileges because of white ignorance. Sure. But, but if we are as smart as we say we are, we can get rid of that idea and get rid of those privileges and make them those privileges available to every member of the human race, right. 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 of which there is only one race. Right. There's only one race of human beings. I wear this shirt deliberately. I used to wear one that said, prejudice is an emotional commitment to ignorance. That isn't the same as saying there's only one race. Beautiful. I just wanted to say... Thank you so much for having me here. You are honestly one of my biggest role models, and I can't thank you enough for allowing us to do this interview. I promise to uh, uphold the majority of, the, of your teachings. And I'm, I'm really flattered that you came here all the way from Chicago. Yes. And if you use this in any way that convinces even one person right. that there's only one race, the human race, this is an idea whose time has come, no power on earth is going to be able to stop it, but there is the power in somebody like you who can perpetuate it, who right. can bring this message to people who need to hear it. And in this country, that's everyone. Right. Black people need to know that we all started with black people, that they are the beginners, beginners. And they will be here long after white people have passed away because they have enough melanin in their skin to protect their cells from the damaging rays of the sun. The sun. And as the ozone layer gets smaller, it gets, it gets smaller and smaller, the whole, as the hole in the ozone layer gets larger and larger, because of what industrial countries are doing to the, to the air, right. more and more white people, so-called white people, will go, are going to die of melanoma. Yeah. Because they have no protection from the damaging rays of the sun. Yeah. So, black people... Get ready. <laughs> I'm serious. Black people are going to have to, to take this thing on and manage this thing because you're going to be, be all there is to do it. My only fear is you don't believe things will get much worse I mean, in order to ensure that the I genetic think, survival doesn't... Well, I think things are going to get worse. I think that as you watch what is happening to the polar ice cap right. and as you watch the, the people who, in agriculture who seem to know say that it's going to be harder and harder to grow plants yeah. because of climate change, I think it's going to get very, very bad. Yes. And I'm grateful to be this age. Why is that? Because I'm not your age. <laughs> you have to go for it. And I don't have to worry about that. But right. you do have to. Yes. And you have to do something about it. People your age have to do something about this because your very existence is threatened by the things that we are doing as we have taken away the regulations which is what Mr. Dinosaurus T. Mount did <laughs> in order to destroy what Barack Obama did. Right. As we do away with those regulations, the air has gotten, the quality of air, the air in this country has gotten worse steadily over the last three years. Yeah. It's going to get worse. The quality of the water, the quality of the land is going to get worse. Yeah. And, and this, this, just last week, I read an article that said, growing crops is going to be extremely difficult as this climate change occurs and as we see it happening and what are we going to do? Right. I want to know what you are going to do. Right. Yeah, well don't tell me right. Oh you're asking me what, what I'm going to do. do. To do my part in order to educate, oh, as, many people, to educate as many people as possible. Are you going to stop eating meat? Yes I am. I just idea. had this conversation with my friend uh, Chris not too long ago. Good idea. Are you going to stop consuming things to the point where you buying things that you don't need just so that you can call yourself a consumer exactly. and keep those coins in moving yes ma'am and buying things you don't need and doing things that ruin 
The land, the water, and the air. Yes, ma'am. Make yeah. a film about hog confinement. Well, you're at it. It's called, it's called what? Hog confinement. Hog confinement. Yes. We'll do. About factory farms. Make a film about factory farms. I promise farms. I will. Okay, you do that, and it will scare you out of your skin. Well, I do. And so you will be black because right? you won't be black anymore, right? You'll scare you out of your skin. <laughs> I ain't going to work at all. Yeah, if I made this film, would you give me commentary on it? I'll make a contingent upon that. <laughs> I'm serious. Somebody yeah. has to make a frightening, truthful film about what is happening with factory farms and what's happening to a state like Iowa mm -hmm. as a result of these factory farms in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Over three million hogs being raised in Iowa. Drive down the road now, north of here, with your windows open. Okay. And you'll find out that the smell is atrocious mm. because of these factory farms. Now I know farmers have to make a living, but you have to realize that many of these <laughs> many of these hogs that are being raised in Iowa are being raised for Chinese consumption. Mm. Yeah. Mm. God has a way of taking care of these things, doesn't she? Yes she does. Yes she does. She most certainly does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I think we're gonna we're gonna push ourselves too far and my daughter says this planet is just going to shake us off. Yes. Someday it's just going to shake us off. Yeah. Well, she lives in California. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she'll be there a lot.